Good evening, good evening. Uh, I hope everybody is doing okay. We've got everything going here. Today's been a pretty good day. I'm actually ahead of the game for once. Usually I'm I, the last second popping on to the feed. I work up to the last minute of pretty much everything. It's just, just me, I guess. Um, we're going to talk about literally the ease of doing reselling. And I think this is more along the lines of having a conversation with a couple of people over, um, I don't want to talk about another personal uh, name of another YouTuber or something, but there's folks that sell courses out here and the, some people spent hundreds of dollars on a course and services and stuff, which again, there's nothing wrong with courses, but today's conversation is based on a very long, very upsetting conversation I had with somebody else who was very upset. Not, not I wasn't upset with me or anything else like that, but Basically, they spent hundreds of dollars that they didn't have thinking that it would be easy by the way they portray the ease of how easy it is to make a ton of money on reselling, which it's not. Um, too many people portray it as just super, super easy. You're going to make some money right off the bat, and it's just, just this easy. I go to a garage sale, and I find a whole bunch of stuff, and then boom, I'm out going to sell it. Um, those types of days around here are long gone. I mean, 10 years ago or whatever the case may be, if you went to a garage sale, you could almost always walk out and just one day's trip to just a few garage sales with some really good stuff. Um, you know, sometimes it's stuff they didn't list in the ads and all kinds of stuff like that. We used to do very, very well on them. Not as well as we're doing now or anything else like that, but we've always done good. The, the, the point being, it's not you find 100 or something or 50 or something every week and you're just fine. It's all rolling fine and dandy. For for the folks that I talk to, the four hundred dollars or so total they have invested into this really has not done them any good because the items that were pushed and talked about and addressed were stuff that the market's crashing somewhat. There's a lot of competition on eBay. There's a lot of competition on Amazon. There's a lot of competition out in the real world for the items that they thought they'd easily be able to find hundred dollar tennis shoes all the time. And that's just, it's just not the case. And unfortunately, I hear the conversation at the end of the day when they've had it, they're, they're about ready to throw in the towel, don't know what to do. And it's usually someone with kids or something like that. Um, those who I've talked to in depth know, you know, I'm a family man. I always have been, you know, my wife and kids come first. It's just the way it always has been for me. That's how I grew up. That's how my father was with my family. You know, and I, I get a lot of those conversations. Um, there's not a whole bunch I can do to fix the situation, but the, the, the dream world of being a reseller and making a ton of money all the time, you're just rolling in money, is, is not the case. This is... I, I, I can't say it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life to get to this spot. Again, it's not always hard, but the, the point of it being that I probably have put in more hours doing this than anything else in my life. And I used to work like 70 plus hours a week for a restaurant chain as a regional manager. I handled that 1.30 some odd stores. This, this is more, I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't know if challenging is the word. It's challenging in a different way than working for somebody else. If you're working for somebody else, you, you got a paycheck coming in. As long as you don't mess up or intentionally do something wrong, you know, or you quit, you, you're pretty much set for a long length of time. When you're doing this, one simple mistake, $400 on something that you can't afford, but you do it because you assume it's going to make your life better, is is a huge mistake for some so for some folks. For $400 for some people is their entire food money and gas money for a month. Maybe not right this minute, but as a general rule. And that may sound like, how could anybody live on that? We've done it. We had no money at one point, and you know, I had small kids and the wife. We did everything we could, and I mean, I was up in before the sun came up, and I didn't go to bed till well after the sun went down, working and doing whatever I could. You, you, it's it's a learning curve, of course, but look into what you're what you're going to invest money in before you do it. Don't just jump on it because someone says it's good. My data might not help a bunch of people out there. My my videos and stuff because I talk about specifics. I, I talk about what I do and what I sell, 
And I, I would hope that everybody else does that, but unfortunately that's not the case with a bunch of people, it seems, these days. And, and, you know, people call out other channels to me. I don't put out any names or anything else like that. This isn't a direct attack on anybody. This is a generalized issue that I've been, uh, you know, having to talk to people about constantly over the years because they've, they're in a bad spot you know, monthly fees to a, another reseller and stuff like that. My my rule of thumb, and it, not just because this is me, but this is how I would have looked for somebody if I needed help. I don't look for the person who's worried about the YouTube money or the YouTube videos. Yeah, I get money, so don't don't say, I'm not trying to say I don't, but I'm a f reseller first and foremost. I don't answer most questions. I don't have time to go back in and answer comments and stuff. I, I don't have a bunch of time to answer the hundreds and hundreds of emails that we get for help on items and stuff. I don't have the time. You know, I, I have a Patreon and a YouTube thing here, but I, I, I'm able to address a certain percentage. And if it's over that, I'm, I'm flooded. I don't have the abilities because my business, reselling business is where we've started, where I'm at, what I like the most of and what brings me the most revenue in the reselling, you know, I guess, space that I'm in. Pick somebody who's actually does what what they're saying. And I'm not saying it has to be me. I, Lord knows you know, there's a ton of people. I get tons of nasty messages and stuff that I'm not helping anybody or I'm not doing this or that. Fine, whatever. That's your opinion. But for, for, I really hate, this is the point. I really hate getting the conversation when somebody's barely able to feed their kids and they, they invest in something and it's just not, it, it just wasted their money. It wasted two months of their time thinking this is going to be great like this and that. And I can't source most of the stuff that I see a lot of other resellers uh, selling. And I'm not saying they're bad resellers because I can't source it. I, my, where I live, it's not here. It has nothing to do with who's telling you what to get. I get what I can find and I get what I can make a, a you know good chunk of money on. And that's what it is for everybody out there. Nobody can do a cookie cutter with reselling. I don't care. I know there's courses. They might teach you the, the, the basics and get you rolling and stuff. But value-wise, I would rather get a book then watch a bunch of stuff or something personally with like technical stuff. I, I love watching, you know, like crafter videos on miniatures and models and stuff like that. I don't get to watch much of them, but the, the, the point of it is that a book will save you time and, you know, written and all that kind of stuff. I don't have a course. I don't do a course. Not again, saying there's anything wrong with courses, but there's good courses and there's bad courses, you know, value wise. If it's expensive, chances are, they're more interested in the money. Once you create something like a book or something, it, I've got a couple books that we're, we're really close to doing something with. Um, you put in the effort and all this time into it, and the, the point of getting a publisher, which is what we're working on, is to sell a bunch of them so you can sell them cheaper. I would, I would hate to sell a course for $500 a month or something. I would feel... I wouldn't feel right about doing that because I think that's a lot of money. I never had a lot of money until recently. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to brag, but the, uh, for me, I would never charge $500 for a course. Even $400, I think, would be crazy, you know? Reasonable, trying to help people. Are you trying to help people or are you trying to just make a bunch of money? I, I guess that's the point. Once you get the course created, there's no extra upkeep in it unless you do a new course. So I, I never understood why people charge so much. I'm not greedy, so I don't really care about you know that stuff. I grew up on the 1999 Ronco uh, commercials at night and stuff like that. Everything was 9.99 for two of them and all this stuff. So I'm not one to push heavy prices. I don't buy expensive really anything these days, other than maybe some computer uh, items and stuff, just because the best is the best. I think I missed. I think I missed. Oh, Auction Monkey. Well, thank you very, very, very kindly. You mean reselling isn't like they show on TV shows? No. Again, I get the, this comment all the time from people personally. I really appreciate that, Auction Monkey. You don't really have to do that. I know you're a member and all that. Um, you would be surprised at how many people spend the last of their money in the bank account that they have to get a course thinking that that's going to change their world. They would have been better off on the real world spending that $400 on merchandise after they looked it up and then figured it out on their own because they'd make far better money. They wouldn't waste the time and they'd get real world experience in what they're doing. Obviously, knowing certain items is helpful. 
if you don't know that some some certain items are even worth anything to begin with you're never going to be looking for them so i can understand all the videos i see out there and that people say hey check this out and all that kind of stuff same with a lot of my videos i i understand that aspect of it when it gets into like how to do ebay i only have a few videos on that and you can go back i haven't you know updated them very much um I'm more into what I'm into. I'm not into trying to show everybody how to do every little aspect on eBay. No disrespect to anybody. The only way I figured out eBay is by doing it. The only re way I fit figure out anything, mechanics, putting in stuff in the car, swapping out an AC compressor, or yanking the dashboard out or something, I did it. I got a book of car repair. I did it. Computers, I started that way. And then I said I liked it. I went to school and stuff and, and got a degree in it. Whatever I do, I've tried to look up the, the, just the directions and work it on myself. I, I always think, and with my kids, I've always tried to let them, you know, figure stuff out on their own. I think that's best. If they get stuck, come to me or whatever the case may be. But real world knowledge on what's going on versus the fantasy world you see on TV shows. Perfect example there, Auction Monkey. Um, it's not the same. Now, I, I get the, the gist on, like, Pawn Stars and all that stuff. They show some really neat stuff on the show, but, you know, they ask questions ahead of time. I know, I've now talked to and, and know a couple people who have been on the show before. Um, I've got a patron for one, and I've got two other, one's a friend, and they actually met in one of their items on the show. But anyway, the, the point being that, you know, they're nice people from everybody that I've ever talked to. They show some neat items, but ahead of time, you give them how much you want out of items, all this other stuff. So I don't know how it's fantasy world, I guess is the point. I'm kind of trying not to be offensive. because I've watched the show. Don't get me wrong. There's some really neat stuff on there. Yeah, he's one of Washington's clothing outfits it wasn't military but it was still really neat and we've seen that and i've been to mount vernon myself and i've seen his house and property they were actually doing an uh, archaeological dig when we were there and you know i really like that kind of stuff i metal detect on the side it's i love the history aspect of it uh, so let's 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 stick on this topic because i know I'm, I'm always ridiculed for not staying on topic we'll get to the comments and questions i really want to hit this in there because Sometimes I talk with people very extensively and, you know, I spend some time. I'm, I'm back and forth for an hour or something sometimes with somebody because their situation is dire. I've I've talked to them before and things like that. And I don't tell anybody, I think, anywhere that I could ever think of, don't listen or talk to this person, that person. I try to never call out a name or anything else like that. Um, there's, there's more than one. There's quite a few channels. There's quite a few... Just because someone's new doesn't mean they're bad, but if, if you want to gather knowledge, I'm not going to go to someone who's just started it for a YouTube video series. I'm going to go to somebody who's, who's an old-timer, not because I'm an old-timer, but that's I, I learned the business acumen, how to run a business and stuff, from someone who was probably old enough to be my father at that time. And, and the gentleman's name was Louis, still around. He still runs the same kind of business that I worked under him with. And it was like a father figure to me and it really he knew what he was doing he knew every little ins and outs and st stupid little cut cut uh shortcut secret that i never even would have thought of and it had it not been for him i would have never advanced in business and in working where i where i have and in you know with all that kind of stuff i probably would have never went to college had it not been for him i lost my father when i was 17 so it, it's things like that that I would only look out for. People that are that type of person. You know, I don't care what faith or or ethnic back. I, I don't care about any of that stuff. It, it doesn't, the person is the person. And that's all I, I look for is a good person who knows what they're doing. You know, I, I could do eBay in my sleep. I'm not saying it's easy, though. I, I've just done it for so, so, so long. And I know there's other folks out here in the show that, that have been doing this for Geez, quite some time, very, very long time. Um, no need to call out any other channel's n name. I'm not trying to poke at any other one. I'll, I'll probably go in and delete anyone that's posted a, another channel in here because that's not me. I, 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 I lost it once and named some stuff. I don't. No, I guess I didn't even name it then. But I, I, I even removed that just because I wanted to be the better person on that one. But you know, it gets old. I know a lot of other pokes. You know, I get bummed because somebody says something, but. I get emails just out of the nowhere when there should be no, nothing going on and stuff. Again, I'm 
no problem at all. There's folks that I've talked to for a couple of years, every single week in a long, you know, long conversation uh, type form. So, I mean, I, I, I know some people fairly well or enough to say I know their business very well. I know where they go. I know what they get. And I've seen their items and stuff. And, and we've talked about them, you know, week after week. There's quite a few people these days. Sometimes it takes me a long time to get through emails in my Patreon uh, um, membership because I do. I mean, sometimes I'm typing, you know, a, a thousand words to somebody back and forth, you know, just on one message alone. Um, you know, it's disheartening to me when I can see through the folks and, and you know, I I can I got a BS detector, I guess, or something. I've, I've had to deal with it in business as a general manager and then as a regional manager. You got to know when someone's, you know, screwing around with the numbers. You got to know when someone's not being honest. And, and it would be nice if everybody was just, you know, honest with what they do and what they're portraying on there. I know it's it. you get better views and more money as a YouTuber if the videos are always showing something awesome, every single video. Um that's just where the the folks are i don't honestly pick a, a topic or anything based on where the revenue may be it it means it's I, i've done 2200 videos you know how how i mean i'm not sitting here picking out i'm going to do a video here because it's going to make a lot of money i don't usually plan them i just i like doing and talking about the stuff i do so i just throw something out there P please pay attention to where you're investing your money and whether it's even me some people, my, my memberships would be useless to a lot of folks out there who don't know what to do or don't want to deal in certain certain items. So, you know, take it as it is, I guess, is the point. I, I just, I hate when it's someone who has kids, small kids, because I've been there with two small kids and not making much money and we could barely afford anything. And, you know, I, I it brings back bad memories when, you know, I wished we could have done better for our kids when we were, you know, back then fighting just to make the bills, so. The point is, I guess I feel for those folks, and, and I know exactly how it feels to be in that spot and not knowing if you're going to have enough money for groceries or having to count every dollar in your grocery cart to make sure you don't go over, what, the 80 bucks you might have had for that week or your trip to the store. So you, you don't look like a fool when you get to the counter and have to put a box back or something because you're 27 cents short or something like that. So anyway, that's life for a lot of people, and that was life for, for us for a little while. Um, it's just the break. Stuff happens. Katrina swamped us pretty bad. We lost the house. And anyway, it was just a bad experience in, in overall. So $400 to most people is a lot of money. And, and it was for us back then, $400 would have been like striking the lottery almost to some extent, you know, because it would have meant in, in one month, I didn't have to worry as much about where the bill money was going to come from. And that was when I was even working for somebody else, you know, because they didn't pay a lot where we were living, you know. Anyway, I know I'm rambling now. We'll circle around back to this topic again, too, because, man, it's it. I, I wished it was as easy as they show in, in the other videos and stuff. Ten years ago, it was. Ten years ago, I, I swear to you, it was probably 15 years ago, it was dream come true. 20 years ago, it was probably just phenomenal for those that were online selling back then, and as we were. So um, let me pop in here before all the names start to disappear. Biff... Bofo, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening, RCQ. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ah, uh, sometimes my brain slips and I don't give the best wisdom out there. Danky the Clown, how are you doing, Danky? Charles Lowe. Good evening, good evening, good evening, Mr. Lowe. Um, somebody asked me about... Um, well, I won't get into that topic. I better not go that way. I won't say it. Never mind. Now that's going to have somebody wondering. Phoenix Resells, how are you doing? I have sourced in Phoenix once in my life. I did go out that way. I was flying out. End, end of story. I was going out to Whittier, California. We stopped in, in Denver. Um, flew into Denver International. I guess it's International. Mile High Airport or whatever it's called. And then we went to Arizona through there too. But anyway. Um... Jeff, how are you doing, Jeff? Mr. Loftus in the house. Hopefully things are going well down your way, way, way down south. At least south from me, I guess that would be. Marty, Jiminy Flippet, another fellow YouTuber in-house and a good friend of the channel also. He is probably, he does more um, print ad videos than I think anybody else does. 
he sells more than I do without a doubt, and he lists more than I do in print ads for sure. I just haven't broken back down into print ads because I happen to be getting... I got some connections, so I'm just going with my connections right now. I love print ads. The artwork on them is just phenomenal, in my personal opinion. Um, I've got some on the wall, just FYI, just because of the artwork, the graphics. I love graphical work like that. Um, anything related to movies are always popular in my mind, as are Militaria, World War II, Bombers Overhead, and Patriotic. Those are awesome. Um, Antiquarian Bookman, good evening, good evening. I picked up a few books the other day. I'll have to put together another book video because I do love books. I love old books. Some of my uh, earliest big, huge purchases have been books. When we were in um, Florida, I lived in Claremont, Mineola area in Florida. I know there's some folks that are going to know that area. We used to go to Mount Dora and Webster's. For anybody who knows the area, you'd have to be out there Monday at like 4.30 in the morning with a flashlight, checking out the sellers out there. I set up. I used to have a, a, a spot out there inside and out in the field for, for a couple of years, honestly. Um, that used to be one of my best areas. We bought a bookstore out in downtown Webster or or um, what was the city name? Mount Dora. Um, when you're coming through, heading towards Webster, for anybody who knows Webster, I know for the rest of you it's probably not helpful, but you go through Main Street, and if you made a right on Main Street, on the right side was a bookstore. I bought out that entire bookstore on the right side. It was a gentleman whose parents were the founders and creators of Frosty Root Beer. His parents created it. They owned Frosty Root Beer. Um, and if you look up Frosty, you'll know. It, and when we bought out the, the store, I still have some here. I got a whole bunch of frosty stuff out of there. I still have some of the pla paper placemats and paper signs and a bunch of stuff like that that I got from him personally. Um, anyway, I know I'm rambling there, but where are we at now? Hey, Mr. Hale. Bob Hale in the house. Good evening, Bob. For those in Patreon or in the YouTube membership here, a video is already uh, posted probably an hour or two before the show. Um, those in Patreon, all comments, questions have been returned. I answered everybody's email. Um, a new call-outs will be up tomorrow. It's already done, processed. Um, I switched a few things around, so it looks slightly different. We're trying to come up with something that makes it a little easier and more convenient, plus um, helps with the tone. I was a little bored with the last one. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, I've changed the ending credits three or four times probably. I've never changed the beginning credits because I really... Um, I, I played with it, and I think at one point I showed some new ones and I was thinking about using it, and I just got a whole bunch of people, no, don't change it, don't change it. They're used to hearing the, the sound in the beginning. Um, Amazon Seller 99, how are you doing? Good to see you in-house as well. I know you had made some comment, Bob, and I, I know I, I saw that as well. Um, good evening, Amazon Seller 99. Stephen uh, Holton, how are you doing, Stephen? Let me slide on down a little here. Artie Mike, hey, Mike, how are you doing? Yeah, I did see that. I just wanted to go right into the... Uh, I'm sorry, I've got hair floating around here from the, one of the dogs. Jack's up there running around. Um, my other dog's not doing the, the, the best, but she's still here hanging in there. So Jack's a handful, though, but really love that dog. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Black Crystal Dice, good evening, good evening as well. Treasure Finders TN, good evening. I'm assuming you're from Tennessee. I always think Guten Abend, and that was what our the first first German words I ever learned in, in uh, school was Guten Abend. Um, anyway. Uh, Matt Jake, how are you, how are you doing this evening, too? Uh, and everyone in the chat. Yeah, things... Let's talk about sales for a few minutes here because I've been getting a lot of, a lot of um, bad issues with sales overall. Recession. I, we can't talk about what's going on without talking about recession. Now, a key factor in, in us, not me personally, but me as well as everybody else in reselling, you should be watching what the bigwigs are doing right now. And if you listen to what Bezos said, you don't have to like him. All you got to do is, is keep an ear out for his conversation and his thoughts on selling online because he's got the biggest record house, not records as in that, but um, information house, I guess I would say, of data. He's got the most data at this point on sales histories and tracking. And he can see micro trends that we would never be able to see. eBay 
eBay couldn't even see them. E eBay would be in the dust in this too. Amazon is the only one that I could say for sure has a has a, a spot again just because of data. And I'm not saying this is good at all, so don't don't say I'm sticking up for them. But they've got enough data to judge on where sales are floating over with merchandise, as well as you know things being out. So if if anybody on the globe right now could judge, at least anybody in our realm, my realm, in in you know the the Western side. Um, it would be their company. And he's, he's saying, what did he say? Um, pull up your pants or something or buckle down or something like that. He said, I don't remember the exact words, but that's the gist on it. So every economist that I've been watching, and, and I know many people may not look into this stuff, but you, you should because it's going to affect how reselling goes. I'm not just saying that to, to push you anything. I, I truly 100% would hope that everybody out there would be looking at the overall aspect of reselling. If you really want to be a reseller your whole life and that's what you want to do, you want to be in control of, of your life as best as you can, you got to watch the markets. If I can, if like a, something something's going to crash and I can see there's a bubble or whatever else like that, you got to pay attention to that. Like the trading cards, you know, non-sports trading cards. A bubbles growing comic books you know graded stuff there's a every 10 or 15 20 years or so in in collectibles there's a crash and then it comes back up it's happened since the 70s it did it in the 90s it did it what 2008 or so 7 2008 2007 it's been more than 10 years since the last one i know it fluctuates a little bit so we're heading on the 15 year mark since the last collectibles and that that genre that era the the comic book related movies are just flooding the market and at one point it's going to be overkill and that stuff's going to start to fall wall street's going to pull out some of that money if if there's better lucrative areas to sink it into and that's going to crash some areas and that that happens again this stuff repeats constantly you can go all the way back to the 30s and every 10 15 20 years there's some sort of not necessarily a recession, but you know, at least a dip enough where it's going to affect your personal business. So that's that's the gist on it. Well, welcome aboard, uh, Mr. Coleman. Bob Coleman here. Welcome. Thank you for the uh, very kind membership support there. Good to have you on. I am going to add more. You're only allowed so many uh, emojis and stuff um, as you start. So just FYI, there will be more on there. So for those who are in there, I'm going to look at some this weekend. If we have the ability to add more, I've switched them up. I let the wife pick some more comical ones too. So, um, I'm just not a great person on picking some of that stuff out. I don't like all the glitzy stuff as much. I like the, the radar, or the, uh, radioactive sign. I actually picked that one, but, uh, where are we at? Um, let's, let's pop back over to the conversation we're having. I keep track on their sales, the quarterly reports for every site I'm on. So I'm looking at Etsy, I'm looking at Walmart, I'm looking at Amazon, eBay, I, I check with HIP. Um, I look at Poshmark and I don't sell on it. Macari, 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 I think it is. I don't sell on it and I still look at that. I look at Bonanza, I've looked at Ruby Lane. Every quarter, every three months, I'm looking at numbers. I'm looking at what they're stating, where their revenue's going. Are they up? Are they down? Gross uh, merchandise volume, GMV, where's that at? Is it up for overall? Is it down? Where's it at? And that matters because you can get a consensus on what's going on. All the, I'm sure Amazon looks at everybody, all the other sites' you know, numbers. I'm sure of it. They got to. They have to know what, what percentage of the overall market they are and all that kind of stuff, too. So it, it's going to make you a better seller because you're going to be more invested in the whole aspect of reselling. You're not just going to go grab something, sell it. I got some money. Let me go spend it. You're going to, you're going to double down and, and maybe you weren't a business person before, but your point is by paying attention to this, you understand how important your, your sales are, how important doing this step or that step or reaching outside the box or spending more time and, and more effort into your business. So you're going to make more money. The, the more I invest time and effort into my business, first off, the, the easier it gets for me, the quicker I get at it, and the more money I always make, which is always the end result is what you want. You want to make more money. It would be stupid to, to do this and keep making the same amount as costs go up of everything. You're, you're not going to be gaining. You're going to be losing ground at that point. The, the answer may be you have to list a bunch more just to keep to the same level you were last year. There's shortcuts, long tail items, mass quantity of items up. Quantity for us overrules anything. Just having a sheer mass of 30,000 items up in the store I share, 
it overrules so much of the the aspect that other sellers have problems with. If you got a couple hundred items, you just don't have the best desirable items. They'll sell. They're they're not bad items to to say, but they're not going to sell quick enough for you to have enough turnover to pay your bills in many cases, and that's the problem. You know, that's that's the biggest problem with with that aspect of it. So, you know, you you got to be careful on every step. You've got to be paying attention to what's going on. You got to be looking at where the future of reselling is going. I pay attention to even what Goodwill does, especially with the site opened and things like that. Um, every little aspect of this. Now, I don't go to, um, like, out to thrift stores very often. If we go to thrift stores, it's just the wife and I goofing off usually these days. Maybe I'll shoot some video or not, but I'm not going to do anything else. I might buy a couple shirts that I'll end up wearing, to be honest with you. That might be more so what I would get these days than anything. I miss going out, and so does the wife. We've went to thrift stores since probably the first or second month I met my wife, way back in Disney days when we were both working at Walt Disney World. Uh, Ten years at Walt Disney World, as a matter of fact. Got married. The wife and I snuck on to... Um, we, we snuck out, actually, and we got married on Disney property. The gentleman who married us was a, a minister who actually worked at Disney as well. Not as a minister, but... Uh, I don't think anybody who was at our wedding, uh, I think everybody who was at our wedding was a Disney employee, honestly. Um, I know, I'm rambling. Debbie Davis, hi from Wisconsin. Come and smell our dairy air. That, I think, was what the, the plate said maybe one time or something. I remember that on a shirt for sure. Uh, I went to the Wisconsin Dells, for anybody who knows that what that is. Very lovely, very nice place. They had um, the military ducks that they decommissioned years ago, and they would drive around town in, in Wisconsin. And when I was a kid, I got pictures of me in, in, in these. And then they would drive right off into the water, and, you know, you'd do a tour of the Dells, and we got to see the dog jumping over, which I hated. But anyway. Uh, uh, Biff Bofo, I'm sorry. I don't have much sympathy for people who buy courses. There's so much good free content online. You know, I, I'm i not going to criticize your standpoint because I, I've, I've thought that way in the past before too, but I try to, I don't know. I Yeah, people should know better, but I don't know. You know, you, you try to get that hoping that something's going to go right and somebody's going to help you and on and on. I can't help most of the people out there. I mean, there's just no way. There's just one, one of me and, you know, but the, the point is that, I wanted to help, and there wasn't much I could do. They've spent the money. I can't go back and change the time. They couldn't find this. They couldn't find that. It, it, it was just a useless endeavor for them. And, you know, even asking questions, the answers didn't help either. Um, and they all seemed to be canned. I, p people show me what the courses are usually. I've probably seen most any other YouTubers' courses at one point. I'm not asking for them. Don't ever send them to me on, on that aspect. I'm not asking for them. I never have asked for one. I don't do anything with them. I, um, but anyway, the, the, the point being is... You know, you do it once and then they it's up and it sells and, you know, who cares? That's that's just, I guess, what it is. I don't know. Uh, let me uh, pop on down here. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Um, Mia C. Crest, how are you doing this evening? Let me pop down. My feed might get lost in just a second here. I've got a large feed. Hang on. Where are we at? Where are we at? Um, hang on. My feed's all over the place. I think I am lost on my feed. Uh, okay, wait a second. Here we are. The Disgruntled Octopus. Good evening. Again, I, I do like that number. I like your little emoji there, even. Uh, Terry Blakeney. Blakeney? I don't know. I probably butchered that. Monroe, Louisiana. I've been there many times. We went to Bro Bridge for the Crawfish Festival on more than one occasion. Um, downtown Brobridge when the crawfish festival is going on it's pretty much just crawfish shells on the streets and stuff I know that may not sound like fun but I love crawfish uh, we're gonna have probably have if if the the market still bears we're probably gonna buy a big uh, 33 pound or 34 pound bag of crawfish live and have them flown in on a plane in the beginning of the year it's not as expensive as you'd think i know a, 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 a seafood market here he has them flown in and if i can arrange it it'll come in on one of his his special arrangements and i'll just have a whole bag is basically the gist of it um c 
Stephen PB, I need more Thursdays with. Uh, well, thank you very kindly. Thank you very kindly. I do appreciate that, Stephen. I do honestly do try. Uh, Amazon selling 99. In my opinion, most courses are scams or at least have little to no value. Maybe one in 20 are good. If you want to learn, buy a book. If you lose, it's only 20 or 30 bucks. I went to the library to get the books. I was even cheaper than that. I just get them from the library. Um, price guides. When I need specific price guides that maybe for something I only get once in a blue moon, not for the prices, but for identification, I just get them from the library. In, in our state here in Ohio, you can have a book from any other library in the whole state shipped to your local branch for free. And we're still alumni, and I've got my alumni card from UT, so I can get um, college-level books sent, too, like specialty ones. And, and in some cases, they might only have it at the university or something. You might have to go there, but you know, usually you're able to do that, and I can just bring my page scanner and scan some pages, and off I go. I've got a little portable, little tripod. Anyway, that's long story short there. Let's not ramble too much. Craig Landshark Picker, another good uh, YouTuber in-house. Good to see you as well. Yeah, I always forget to say hit that thumbs up there. But if you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up here. 198 people in-house and 80 thumbs up. Um, let's see where are we at. MQA, the foreigner means the world to me. Lost most of my IRA. I've been retired three years. Completely understand. $400 is for some people. If your house is paid for, that might be a month's worth of, of homeowner's insurance or your, your insurance or your taxes for the end of the year. Um, taxes on a house could be four or $500 a month if, if you're not aware of that, if you own it, depending on the size of the property and the assessment on the value on the home. If the values go up, your taxes go up and on and on and on and on. So anyway, uh, Ricky Donald, you can only make a living by selling tobacco products and alcohol. Laugh out loud. No, not only tobacco products and alcohol, but yeah, there's some money to be made there. Um, yeah, let's see, Matt Jake, really easy, just like the storage auctions back in the 90s. I made money, but it wasn't like the show, and I couldn't live on it solely. Back when we first started, if I would have done this full-time back then, I could have lived on this um, with the stuff, because we used to find, oh, I mean, up here in the north, it, it's always been pretty good. When we lived in, in um, the D.C. area, Washington, D.C. area, there was one thrift store that, that we could have lived on, and it was, um, I think, Community Thrift, and it was in Maryland, right off 475, I think, in Laurel, Maryland. It might still be there. It was like up on a hill when we're heading, heading I think it was south on 475 on the, the, the bypass to the right. I don't know. The, the bypass or the 475 to the right. I can't think of. It would have been south, I, I, I want to say, but it would have been on the left-hand side, same side as the Fort Washington turnoff up there um the place was the bomb i used to deliver intentionally i'd go by just so i could stop by there so if somebody didn't show up i'd just run the route myself if if i was able and wasn't tied up somewhere else and then i'd stop at that store and that one man we could have i could have lived off that store that one store that was the best store i've ever seen in my life um back in the 90s era that may not one stop there 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 was probably the largest nintendo um, NES, the original set I've ever seen. A, I mean, it was just, it was like 1,500, probably almost every single game. We ended up buying like 400 of them because that's all the money we had. And it was, I was just trying to grab them because it was just, it was a fiasco there. I mean, we, we loaded up. I mean, I've never had such good luck when we went, other than when we were up there. That was just like the bomb. Brimfields is really well. It was good too up in Boston, but, um, you're so right. Yeah, the alcohol and tobacco products. Some of that, though, you know, like at a grocery store, they might their profit margin might be minuscule, like 1.5% profit margin. So on like a dollar, they're making a penny and a half in some cases. In some cases, some stores may buy product and not make a dime. They may actually lose a few cents in each one when they sell it. And I know you're going to say, that's not true, but it is true. When, when you work at like... Um, let, let's take gas stations for an example. Um, well, I worked at, at uh, Pilot. I was a, a manager at one of the Pilots before. Huge store. We, we did some days we could handle a you know, quarter million dollars in that store by itself in a day with the gas and, and payroll coming in there because you did payroll too. And some truck drivers made a lot of money. I mean, thousands of dollars a week they were, they were hauling in. But the, the deals they had, they had to have the same product across the country for uniformity and all this other kind of stuff, continuity and stuff, and some of the contracts they had. So in some cities, they lost like 13 cents a gallon 
for every gallon they sold every time, every day for years on end, just because of the way markets work and stuff like that. That's that's true. I, I swear to you, that's true. So, you know, it's not always that a grocery store, even a convenience store makes a lot of money sometimes on tobacco and, and alcohol. I know a lot of it sells, don't get me wrong. And I'm, I'm not one to say don't do it because, you know, I have my share of drinks. I'm not a cigarette smoker anymore. My wife got me off that. But anyway, let's pop back here and get back to the real world here. If it flips, it ships. 101, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Top the flip, good evening as well. Uh, let's see here. Dawson6211, well, thank you very kindly. Do appreciate that. Jackie Jack Enterprises. Our Jack, we, we call him Jackie Jackster sometimes, our dog. He's a he's a riot. I'm surprised the wife hasn't opened up the gate and let him run down here yet. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, Stephen PB, I started selling on eBay in 2000. I purchased many courses. Most of them are bogus, if not less. Again, there are some good ones out there. I know somebody who has a course that I would say is probably a legit course. Um, I'm not going to call it any names because I'm not trying to say this person's better than that one and have anybody. I get enough hate mail and stuff like that. But um, there are some out there that are that are fairly good. But but the 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 one the person that I know who has a good course he does what he says that's the majority of his business, you know. Um, and I I fully believe that he's an honest person in that aspect. Of he's a family man too. I'm not going to give out any names, but I, there's very few that I would ever think or say or anything else like that. I don't want to be out there or called out for recommending one or not one. I don't have one, just because it's not me. I I don't want that. I'd rather have a book that's published and that can sell cheap enough where everybody could get it and or you could even get it from the library or you could you know buy it and then turn around and resell it whatever who cares you know i don't care if somebody sells it after they buy it from me you know i use copy of something i don't care i don't care if most anything's used these days other than underwear and socks you know or shoes i don't care if a pair of pants have been worn before you know, I'm humble. My parents, I, I had garage sale clothes when it wasn't cool when I was a kid. I was religiously picked on back in those days when I was a young child just because of the clothes I wore. My, my parents did the best they could. Uh, and a lot of people don't understand that. I grew up, my parents didn't have a lot of money. My mom stayed home and, and she worked. She she got a job when I was older when we, we started going to school because then she didn't have to watch us 24-7 and she was a nurse already. She she struggled to get through uh, nurses' school and everything. She went here to, uh, I think it was Notre Dame. I think it was the, the college, I think is what it was. Maybe it was UT. I don't remember where she went, honestly. I can't think of that. But anyway, so when I was a kid, she worked nights as a charge nurse. She was in charge of one of the zones at a nursing home, watching people die all the time. It was very depressing. But um, anyway, they did the best they could, my parents. And I, I don't, my dad worked himself to death, working hard, and just to make sure the family had whatever, you know. So anyway. Uh, that's the real world to me. I don't mean to be, you know, waxing poetically or whatever you want to call it, but that's that's what I grew up on. I don't, just being real, that's that's what it is. And, you know, there's people out there that have had everything given to them since they were a child, and they may not get it. They don't see that. And to them, a bill is nothing. What's, who's, what's $400? I would feel almost criminal trying to put up to something like that personally. Well, I, I, let, let's give you a true story here. When I was like 16 or 17, I tried to get a job, and a lot of the ones I had no experience. So there was a service back then that you would you had to pay money up front. I don't remember how I paid it, but you had to pay money up front. Um, and basically, there was like a phone number you'd call, and they'd give you these insider secret job postings and stuff. And it just was a bunch of crap, honestly. And there was like a monthly service fee after they set you up. But it was just a crap, pardon me, crap. BS thing, you know, all glitter with nothing there. And yeah, I learned my lesson. It only took once of something like that. And I never did it again. Um, and I've applied for a job that turned out to be like, um, it said it was um, no outside sales or anything else like that. It was, you know, just, you know, demonstration or something like that. And it turned out you were supposed to push these selling for um, a hope chest is what it was. And it was out here in rural rural Ohio and you'd drive around to small towns and they'd give you leads and stuff and you were trying to sell them China for their wedding or all this other junk. And, and basically, if you couldn't make the sale, they wanted you to call them on the phone and give the phone to the people that you were trying to sell it to and have them do the last leg if you couldn't rope them in. It was just a scam and, and man, it was really a big scam and it was just a BS thing. And, and that's the other one that I turned those folks down to very obviously. But... 
I learned my lesson very early in life that most of the things that look too good to be true are too good to be true and they're just not the way. I always assume for the worst and if something great happens, wow. You know, I never assume I've scored. I've never assume and take anything for granted. I always assume the worst thing's going to happen because me, the wife and I have never had good luck with anything. Ever, We've moved a lot. I was regional, so we moved a lot. I swear to you, every single time we had to move, it rained. And not just a little bit. When we moved out of Mississippi here to where we're at now in Ohio, we lived on a on on sixty acres, and there was and we only paid four fifty a month, mind you, because of the economy there in Mississippi. But um, it was a big house, big built in like nineteen oh five. But it rained, and there was a field there, and there was no like full fledged driveway because it was old country style farmhouse with you know the farms was still there and all that, and um, it flooded so much that I couldn't get the 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 hand carts across with all the box stuff, and it was raining and stuff. So we had to park the U-Haul truck in the neighbor's driveway, 700 feet from the back door, and it, walk it over in the rain, rolling it through the yard, and because the truck, our the the U-Haul truck got stuck in our in that spot. That's the whole the, the case of it, and we had to get a tow truck out there. I'd use one of my auto clubs at that point to get the U-Haul out, and it wasn't loaded when it got stuck. It was just a fiasco. Now, every time we've moved, there's been some issue like that. The Then when we were moving back, that same move, we got down to like, um, oh, shoot, where were we? We were probably up near Knoxville, I want to say, and the U-Haul truck broke down. We had a full, the largest U-Haul truck. I had a, a van on a dolly, so I was I was driving an 80-foot thing. It was about 80 feet when you took into account the trailer I had hooked up with a full-size van on the back. And the wife went on. I had a cousin following us, um, you know, following along too. I had two small kids so that they wouldn't be crammed in a hotel. Anyway, we had to transfer everything. They paid. The company paid for two employees to move my stuff around. And we had to move it from one truck to another in the rain too, just to get here to Ohio. I remember the the song. Um, if you ever seen Jerry Maguire when, I think it's Jerry. Yeah, when he quits the job and, and um, free falling comes on, that's how I felt. I felt totally relieved getting out of there and, at least here, it was it was a big start. Anyway, I know I'm rambling again. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Auction Monkey VH. Uh, I shouldn't have invested buying Black Diamond v, uh, v, uh, VHS is what you're thinking. And uh, Beanie Babies. Now, if you would have bought Beanie Babies when they first were hot, you could have made some money. Nowadays, there's only a few that are worth something. The Black Diamonds have always been... Um, I don't know what the deal is with those, but there's, I think it's money laundering from the ones that I've seen. Or draw. Who knows? I just know that there's no way those are worth a ton of money. You're lucky, even when at the high point when some people were saying they're selling for a ton of money, they were only going for 30 or 40 bucks. I know the graded ones, people say, oh, no, the graded ones don't sell. But I personally know people sold graded ones, and they're not in some, some con job thing. They're, they're literally just normal sellers who have graded some and sold them for some phenomenal money. I think even... Chuck, Mr. Magazine um, has sold one that was graded for some really good money. Personally, if I'm not mistaken, Paper Goy and um, them at, at Million Dollar Peddler's channel here on YouTube. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? It's a grind, especially Amazon, but yes, things are good. Yeah, things are... Once you get the groove of it, once you've put in all the effort, once you put in and you've got your items up and you've got your sources and stuff... It's back to a normal life if you want it. You can do your normal 50 hours or whatever you want to do. 60 hours would be preferable. but And then it's not a rat race for you anymore. But you got to have quantity if you don't have top dollar items. And if you have top dollar items, you got to be able to keep getting those week after week after week after week. Because when you sell them, then if you don't have any more top dollar items, what are you going to do then? So it just depends. Wholesale still works. Um, you know, Stuff like that is probably the, the um, bread and butter of a lot of people's businesses. Wholesale in general is a is a good gig personally if you can get it. Even you know drop shipping is fine depending on what you're doing. Somebody brought up drop shipping and and the course related to the the four hundred dollar rip off for for the folks that I was talking to it wasn't a drop ship course but I think every drop shipper that I've ever personally talked to has had their accounts shut down. Every one of them. I can't think of one drop shipper who hasn't had their account shut down. For one reason or another, drop shipping is very risky. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. I, I, I don't have a personal problem with most of the legit drop shippers. Let's say, see, I, I have stuff on other sites. So basically, it'll sell on another site, and 
I, I ship it out. So that's technically drop shipping, but it's, it's a deal I've worked out with somebody where they get a percentage of it. And, you know, I ship it out from here. It, 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 that's a different story. That's not me selling a thousand or something or cutthroating somebody or, you know, screwing around with stuff. I don't advertise for that. And I just, it's just something I do. So I don't mind drop shipping per se, but if you're going to drop ship and just cut and paste, you know, images and titles from one site to another that you don't even own and then just grab some, some generic item or something, it's not going to work. Private branding very rarely works either. And I have, I've had questions on private branding this, this past month too, including from a Patreon, but private branding is dead as far as I'm concerned, unless you're, again, a YouTuber and you just want to push your, your crap on somebody. And that's just, just not me. But private branding at one time was a good thing. You could come out with some really phenomenal item and make up some brand name that doesn't exist and start cranking them out. But it's really hard to do that these days because the advertising, the net revenue from advertising and big business controls that as far as I, I'm concerned these days. You got to spend a ton of money. I'm talking about not like eBay, you know, promoted or anything. I'm talking about overall, you know, like Chrome, Chrome advertising or something. Again, that's I've looked into all that stuff. If you're a reseller and you want to expand your business, look into stuff that's in your industry. Look at the the blog posts that are in on it. Ina, e-commerce bite. She's got a lot of good stuff on there that goes over all the topics that I read. I think almost every article she comes out, unless it's like something I don't deal with at all, but. Um, nothing wrong with those, of course, either, but um, let's pop back over here before I ramble a whole bunch more about nothing. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Top the flip. Courses, some real sellers charge thirty nine ninety five are a waste of money only lining their pockets. Yeah, it depends on what the course is. Even if they're only charging 20 or 30 bucks, 40 bucks, if it's just crap and just a bunch of screenshots that don't really do anything and there's no knowledge there, it's again, it's a ripoff, too. The, the dollar amount of it doesn't really, you know, mean a difference it, to me. It's still both quack and, you know, just, just a ripoff in, in that extent. If you're going to put something out, put it out good. Take pride in it and don't just look at it from a money standpoint. Again, that's why I, my stuff is now. I've, I could have had stuff posted, you know, three years ago when tried to make the money. But I'm if I'm going to put something out, I want it to show that I spent, you know, put every effort in it to make it correct uh, sincere and legit in every aspect I can. And that's the problem with a lot of stuff. I'm uh, like for, for, I've got a, uh, record pickers guy that I've been working on forever. And the problem with stuff like that is I don't want to use somebody else's photo because I don't want somebody coming back after me later and trying to sue me for the revenue of the book because I'm using or a certain percentage because I'm using photos that came from their site or something. I, I got to have, personal photos that I have permission either to use or that I personally have had in my possession. So whenever I get something that I'm missing a spot for my collection, sometimes I've been buying stuff just to take a photo of it so I can perfectly show with a receipt that I own that product. That's my personal image. Um, Cause everything in, in like my picker's guide that's coming out, it's, it's stuff that's I, I personally own everything in that. There's thousands of photos and I, I own every one of the items I'm showing in there and I, that's been in my possession. And I think that's, I don't know. That's just the way I am. I don't, again, I'm not criticizing somebody else for not being that way. That's just me, I guess. I'm anal retentive on so many things, I guess, these days. Uh, I've got business on my mind most of these days. Um, I'm glad we didn't, housing market, again, this has to do with every, everybody going on. If you've got an adjust, like a 30 year adjustable rate mortgage, your, your payments are going up right now because they've doubled the, the uh, uh, interest rate on that. So you're going to be paying more. So, like, let's say you took out a mortgage for $450,000. The value of that now, your money wouldn't have went as far. You just lost, like, a hundred and what would that be, $30,000 in value off of that when the home prices crash and the mortgage rate goes up. You know, it would be harder to sell. So we're, we're glad we didn't buy something yet because the prices around here, they've dropped 24000 already. And we haven't looked this week, but they've dropped 24000 at one of the properties we've been, we've been really looking at hard to see. So I'm waiting to see what happens with it. We're not going to invest because we may be able to just shell out cash and not have to worry about the bank. So who cares if the more – again, I'm not trying to – I'm not trying to, to make anything sound bad for anybody else, but for us, we've worked really hard and saved up, and, and it would be nice to just be able to pay cash on property, and who cares what the mortgage rate is? I mean, that would be that would be ideal for us, not wishing any harm to anybody else, but anyway. Uh, let's see here. All right. 
Ronco, yeah. I bought three sets uh, and forget it ovens from the company. Great rotisseries. I, we might have even had one of those too. Ron Popeil, I think, was the guy's name. When I was a kid, they had the bottle cutter one. You could turn a Coke bottle into glasses, and that one was the coolest. I had to wait like six or seven years till we found one at a garage sale before I got one. But anyway, I was real young when they first... I was like 70-something, early in the 70s. Um... Top to flip. Well, uh, well, thank you very kindly for those kind words. I do honestly appreciate that. Parker Watson, people forget they have to sit on it for some time. Not everybody, but the majority of sellers out there, you're going to, most everything these days could be considered long, long tail to some extent. It, unless you got the hottest item out there or some in demand item, it's going to sit for a little while. There's no guarantee on time frame for anything to sell. So even if I show you haul videos, I haven't sold it usually i'm showing you what we've got i'm excited about some of the items so i i, I know there's money involved it's just what it's going to sell for is, is the end of the day who knows so unless you see sales on it finding something means nothing to me i don't personally like watching what what you know what other people find videos because i don't i don't run into that stuff I never have a good garage. I don't. I stopped going to garage sales. I stopped going to estate sales. I even stopped going to flea markets. I've only been to very sparse ones. In fact, there was a like a secondhand store that has some vintage stuff. I've been in there once or twice, and I got a couple good items. But they were they're going out of business, and they were blowing it all out really cheap. I didn't even go for that. I might have been able. To, I knew them at least somewhat. I might have been able to work out a deal and bought a whole bunch of stuff, but I didn't need it. And it, and it's it's just a rat race, I guess, with some of the items that are out there. The more common the item, the, the less they're going to be going for, more so and more so, because more people are reselling to some extent. Oh, let's see. Where are we at? Where are we at? Cheryl Buck, how are you doing? Well, I'm glad to hear your sales are that high up. Very, very glad to hear that. Um... I can tell you, if you put the effort in and list all the time, don't just let your stuff sit there and turn into, you know, back stock. If you don't, if you've got time to list something or you got time to sit around and do nothing, your wife isn't home yet or 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If you got 10, 15 minutes, list a couple of items all day long. If you got a few minutes to sit or put a darn TV down wherever you're working or up where you're working or whatever and have something playing or listen to some music in the background. Get a, a standing desk or something or walk on the treadmill and type while you're doing it. Believe it or not, I know people can do that. So it, it's not, there's a bunch of opportunity to list more every day of the week. Whenever we need more money or we're putting down payment or we want to buy something, I, I don't like to hold up money. So if I'm going to buy, shell out, we shelled out 5000 on a bunch of trade cards just last week or the week before. I just got enough money up real quick just so I wouldn't be taking anything out of the bank. Our rule these days is don't take it out of the bank anymore. Just keep putting stuff in the bank. And so we just sold, listed some more stuff, got the revenue in from that, and that pretty much paid for the, the sale. And of course, once we start listing it, the money is going to start rolling back in anyway. But, you know, if I need more money, I list a lot more items. I invest another 10 hours a week, whatever I have to do. You know, who, who said this? Is it... Geez, maybe it was Steve Jobs, and I'm not saying anything about the person himself, but the the one big factor, and I could be wrong on who said this. There could be many people who said the same thing, but one of the biggest factor between those who are very successful and and those that don't don't make it is that the, the people that are successful just don't give up. They don't get discouraged with it. It's more so a challenge that I'm I'm not going to let this beat me. I guess that's the point that I get to. I'm not going to. There's there's got to be a, a way around this. This isn't going to be the end of it for me. I'm not going to let some little thing mess up my business and stuff. And and that's the thing. I I don't get discouraged in that aspect. I take it as a challenge. And that if 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 you're going to give up, you're not going to make it. It's not going to be for you because it it could it took us three years to get to a point where the bills were not a worry. Three years. That doesn't sink in. Even when I say it to people, they think, I'm, yeah, it's easy. I see all these other people. I'm, I'm telling you, it took us, us, three years to get enough revenue coming in from this to not have to worry anymore, at least really not have to worry. And that's when the wife stepped in to help it. Anyway, the, the, the point being is this, this isn't easy. Three years is a long time for somebody to, most people out there would be giving up and trying to get another job out there because it was rough. But, you know, it's either you really don't want to work for somebody else after doing it for 20 some odd years and having nothing really to show for it, 
or you'd rather just do that because you at least have guarantee. If you can muddle through this for long enough to, to get to a certain level, you, you've almost got it made. You've still got to keep keep your foot down to the floor and, and keep you know going forward with this. Goals, a vision of what you want to get is really going to help you. That's, again, why I look at all the, the, the crap that goes around with this. I look at you know blog posts. I read Ina's almost religiously on there, the e-commerce bites. I like to know what's going on. Even though it may not even be related to a site that I'm on, when one site adopts something, the other sites usually do it if it's beneficial to them. The advertising, promoted listings and stuff, eBay starts and everybody else is doing it. Well, Amazon really had it first, but for individuals like that, instead of like uh, keyword-specific uh, uh, ones. but So now they all do it now. So pay attention. I look at other countries, like eBay's other country sites, because they test market in Australia. A lot of times UK policies end up getting broadcast out to other places and stuff like that. It helps to know about like the VAT, you know, when they, they instigated the new change in VAT or Germany or this or that, all that stuff like the Italian ban on certain toys and wood items and stuff. All that means something. And, and if you're not paying attention, post office changes. I root, I've, I've had a account you know, on USPS, the, the Gov's uh, site for the post office for years. We use it to set up um, at the end of the year, every year in December, first week in December, I go ahead and go to every single month, highlight them all, and I schedule a pickup for every day of the year in December. So I'm a year out all the time starting, you know, in the, the first week in December. And I do it religiously. I know, I'm always knowing, hey, I got to go to USPS and I've got to go ahead and schedule pickups because if my routine person's off, they're not going to come by the house. If I miss them, then it's my fault. So, I mean, that's just stuff you, you've got to think about. There's just so much involved in this. Everything is on you. No one's no one's telling you, you got to do this, you got to do that. And that, that kills a lot of people's business because they think, oh, I can relax. I don't have to do this. It's my own business. It's all mine. But if, if it's all yours, for me, that means I want to work harder because it's all mine. I can make, you know, an untold amount of money, you know, from just working a little harder each week. I make 50 extra bucks a week if, if I work a little harder, 100 bucks extra a week, 200 bucks extra a week if I work a little harder. So at the end of the year, I could be making 12,000 extra bucks just by putting in a few extra hours a week. It may not seem like much a week, but you know, even 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Don't don't knock it for granted. When when you worked in restaurants or whatever, is you got time to lean, you got time to clean. And and if I'm waiting on the wife or we're gonna go somewhere or the dog's out in the backyard, I'm just waiting on him, I'll list something real quick. I'll throw in some item specifics. And I have to tell you, if you're not filling in the recommended item specifics, your sales could be hurting because as I put them in, the sales have been cranking up. My sales issues have, have even the little dip that we had is, is pretty much gone. Already today, I've done almost $700 in just my one account. And that's not just to one person. That's a whole bunch of sales from different things. Sheet music, some labels, buttons. I just sold a button just before the show started for $57. Uh, posters. I think there's a record in there. A lot of stuff sold today, and just I sold my I sold my um, my uh, derby hat too today too the box version that I repaired too. Uh, all told, one ninety five. That one went out the door, so I'm happy with that. I, I don't remember what I had into it. Maybe five or ten bucks. I don't remember. I got a video even on that hat, but I was really happy. I, I in fact my deadline had already passed, and I didn't really have to ship it out today. But I I wanted to get a head start because I figured it'd take a little bit because I wanted to be very careful in how I shipped it, but. Anyway, that went out today. That was I was very happy to see that one go because it's been sitting somewhere on a shelf, and I really wanted to put something else on that shelf. But um, hammering, we hammer our store. I, I I wished everybody would get that changing stuff all the time. We've been I filled in in the last week one by one a thousand item specific listings. I went through a thousand listings and filled in the recommended item specifics, including some that weren't even recommended. Just I filled in all kinds of stuff. And while I went through them, I corrected every category error that eBay has switched around, like topographical to non-topographical and postcards. I got 5,000 postcards up at any given time just on eBay and 20,000 more listings on hip postcards as well, too. So there's a lot of stuff I sell that people just don't realize I do that much on. But the point being that all that action, all those individual things I'm checking and changing on eBay and item specifics and all this, it's creating traction on there, like massively. If I'm down in buttons these days or something, I haven't, we were averaging about $2,000 a month just in shirt buttons. We dropped down to about seventeen fifty. I listed some more buttons on a routine basis every couple of days and boom, the sales are right back up. And not only were they back up to normal 2000 plus, 
they're over that now by a couple hundred bucks. So the more action you have on your account right now, it, it, it seems to be doing the, the, the result I want. I've been talking to several other people who have been doing the exact same thing. Every single week I talk to these these folks and we go back and forth on numbers up from last year, year over last. What's my percentage of increase and all that kind of stuff. We were running around 43% for this month so far up. I, I, I can't knock it, but I'm we hammer the store. There's somebody working on my store right this very minute. So that's what's going to get you that. It, and I'm excited to do it. I, I Somebody asked me what's the most boring part and all that kind of stuff about doing this. Do you get discouraged? No, because I know that if I list more or I do a little more, I, I get a return from that. I immediately can see the results from that. If the wife lists, you know, 100 cards in a couple hours, chances are by the time she's done listing the last item, we've sold something already from that. And it's a it's a rush. It is a rush because you're it's almost instant gratis, gratification on stuff like that. Uh, that's me. I, I I don't I don't get bored with this. I could do this every day of my life. I wished I was doing this when I first got a job. My first job doing this would have been ideal. I would have been, you know, so far ahead in this. So, you know, I, I, I it's not easy though. I just love what I do and I don't get discouraged. So if if you want to be the the entrepreneur that even that turns this into a real big business, something that's going to you know sustain you and grow. You got to be into this, in my personal opinion. You really got to step up, and you you've got to have the commitment to not give up, no matter how bad it gets. You know, I I didn't know how we were going to eat sometimes, and I'm not proud of that. That's just the way it was. I looked for jobs, and just it just didn't didn't pan out. I had a college degree, even. I had too much experience. They couldn't afford to pay me this or that, and it wasn't worth it. Or it was an hour and a half one way drive, and it it just that was when you're living in Mississippi. It just wasn't practical either. So. Anyway, long story short, it's, it's a lot of work. I'll go back to that. Uh, let's see, where are we going back to? Uh, comments here. Henry, yeah, so easy to make friends on YouTube, but flipping friends are so hard to find because they are your competition and get mad when you get stuff and they don't. See, I, I've seen a lot of people who are bothered, and even I don't like to go out sourcing with with other folks too often. And I, I, I wouldn't mind going out with Dave, Paper Glory, or somebody like that, but the the... The only reason I'd say it, there's other people, Marty or somebody else like that, but the only reason, because I wouldn't want any weird feelings or if they walk by something and I, I just, I, I'm always weirded out by stuff like that. I don't want any, um, any, uh, bad feelings, I guess. You know, I, I get a lot of hate uh, on some videos. This one I'll probably get a bunch of hate on too, honestly, but I don't look at it, so I don't really care. It just gets deleted here if somebody leaves a nasty message anyway, so these days, you know, who cares, I guess. We're in our own little business, and I think everybody else is feeling the same way these days, too. Pell and Profits, good evening, good evening. Good to see you in-house. Let me flip through here. We've got some time still here. Uh, where are we at? Yes, have used auction percentage deal, and sales are up 50%. Well, that's very good to hear, top to flip. Rick has lost so much money on deals by overpaying, but when you're using History Channel money, who cares? Yeah. They had a video, and I probably brought this up, about some buttons, and they said they were Civil War, and they brought in the, the guy from the museum. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the guy from the museum. I, I don't think he's like trying to scam anybody. I know he's got book or something out, too. That's fine. I don't, I don't mind that. But he said they were legit, and the ones he was holding were not legit. They weren't Civil War buttons. The designs on them were even until afterwards, and they spent a 1000 bucks on these, and it was like maybe $100 worth of buttons, at least the ones they showed. So they're off on a lot of stuff, and they it's glam for TV, and unfortunately that's the case. They were artiller, Eagle A, artillery buttons, Civil War. I, I can tell you, I got, a, I got a couple hundred of those here, all genuine Civil War. They're not that scarce at all. 35 bucks on eBay for each one, so... They pay, they paid it, spent a thousand bucks. They'd never get that out of them. Never, ever, ever, ever what they paid for them. You know, unless they could name them to, you know, Ulysses S. Grant's uniform, but that wouldn't have been on his uniform in the first place. They would have been staff officer buttons. So, anyway. Uh, I'm not buying Beanie Babies Auction Monkey. I do get a lot of calls from folks looking to sell mom's collection of Beanie Babies. Now, look up Beanie Babies. There are still a few that still sell for a couple hundred bucks. So I don't, I know most of them. I've seen, Beanie Babies came out at McDonald's when I was, you know, into this still. So I've seen them all. I remember when the first ones came out. I think the Canadian ones were the first ones, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but they, they came on a card and they were in Happy Meals, if I remember right. But there were some back then that you could honestly sell for thousands. 
that's just you know the way it was like ta uh, like um uh, tickle me Elmo. that was selling on ebay for hundreds and hundreds of dollars because they sold out so quick they, they buy those at a a toy fair or toy show or they have a designer do them a year and a half 18 months in advance so they order what they think they can sell that far in advance if something changes or it turns out to be hot they can't just instantly produce them they got to go back to the manufacturer you've got probably three months time from the time that they start making them to the time a boat lands with you know trailers full of these it's just not an easy process you never know i've been to toy fairs myself it's not it's not an easy endeavor to to do stuff like that honestly so i don't blame the the big companies uh now i'm gonna say leland langford hopefully i i said that right i'm, I'm terrible on names and i don't want to mix anybody's up thank you very kindly for the the recommendation and again hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying the conversation here uh i do honestly try let me see where we're at should we now talk about black diamond little mermaid tapes i swear it's money laundering there is a little mermaid tape um that does sell for around 50 to 75 bucks if it's sealed you can easily get 120 125 in there's a, a male sexual organ on the cover of that one and it's been recalled so there is honestly one single Little Mermaid, Disney, uh, VHS tape that does sell for more than all the other ones because of that. I've had it. I've sold it. You can look it up yourself. There's a big uh, controversy about it. The guy who actually put the cover together and used the art, one of the pyres of the, the castle or whatever it is, is, is a, a body part. Let's just leave it at that. So, and that's true. That's true. That's a, that's a true story. I was working at Disney and when Mermaid was being done, actually. Um, I was even in the, in the animation department when they were doing that. I wasn't working there as animation, but I, I had some dealings with Fran Kirsten, who was head of ink and paint for Walt Disney Studios way back in the day. Um, you can look her up, her name, so you'll, you'll see her name. Um, the mayor, people try and pick my brain as an expert just because I've done this flipping stuff 20 years now. I get that all the time. I can't go anywhere out in public in a. Th I went. Uh, there's a thrift store not too far from here. It's a little tiny one, but um, I've every time I go in there now, I run into somebody, and I, I'm not to avoid people, but you know, it kills my thrifting. And then they know what I do, and I don't. I don't announce anything. If they ask, I don't make something up. But you know, um, you gotta play low key these days, I guess. I get hundreds of emails, though, asking help on price, help on this, help me sell. I don't have time to do that. If I stop, if I took the time to help somebody else something, I'm missing selling my own stuff. You know, and we list 500, 550 uh, value per hour per person. If I'm spending an hour helping somebody else sell stuff, I'm losing four, five, six hundred, who knows how much money. And I, I just don't do that anymore. Um, again, I'm a reseller. I don't spend all the time. I don't push out. I I don't. I can't even tell you when the last Instagram post was. I did. I do the Facebook post because it's real easy from YouTube. But I don't. I haven't even posted on Instagram in months, just because I'm. I'm. I'm not a social media person. This is. I know this is social media, but it's. It's not as interactive as as all the other ones. And I'm. I'm not. I don't feel like I have to do anything. And I do what I like on here. At least I don't have to try and push something like it's good as gold or anything else like that. I'm happy with being the the turtle out of the tortoise and the hare, or the tortoise, I should say. I don't mind the slow road uh, down there. I mean, my numbers have grown, and I'm not pushing. I'm trying not to, you know, market myself to everybody, because I don't like that. I don't want to feel like a carnival barker to some extent. I'm not saying everybody's like that. There's there's a bunch of channels that are, but I'm not, I'm not trying to be that person, so I don't. I don't push items. I could be dropping links to something every day of the week. I know I have some links in here, but I have the, probably half of them haven't worked in I don't know how long. I have sometimes people email your links aren't working. Well, I'm 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 not really concerned about making an extra fifty bucks or hundred bucks a month on that. I just I don't know. I guess I'm lazy on those kind of things. I'm not a promoter. I just I'm terrible on that. Um, Twisted. There are many channels that are full of crap. This is a job like any other one. While it's not really hard, it's still work. It's not hard, hard like manual labor. It is hard as to getting it rolling, figuring out where your deficits are, figuring out how to get the best items, figuring out how to, you know, cut down your time and list more items and figure out pricing and all that stuff. There's there is some hard as an intellectual or or brain power usage. You know, it's it's not manual labor all the time. But yeah, there's a lot of work 
probably one of the hardest days I've had in a while was was getting those free records that I got. I got thousands of free records because I'm walking up and down steps myself. It was hot and sweaty and you know moldy basement and stuff and then they had to be carried up and carried down and unloaded and sorted that's a lot of work that's about as much work as anything else i've done i would say like unloading a truck for when i worked at an applebee's or something you know as the general manager i unloaded trucks even because you know i wanted to be there make sure my product wasn't disappearing out the back door um where are we at where are we at what about the 39,000 uh, iPhone? Uh, yeah, I'm not a big cell phone antiquarian book, uh, book man. Uh, I've never owned an iPhone. I could care less if it's an iPhone or not. Uh, I have no interest in that. I don't care about the iWatch. I don't care what you like. If you like it, that's great. I'm, it just doesn't do anything for me. So when somebody shows off their phone, I'm like, it just looks like any other one to me. I don't really care. It's a tool, and I use I use my phone. But I'm not, I don't care. I don't, I, mean, I don't even know what brand I got. I couldn't even tell you. Maybe it's um, Galaxy something. I don't know. I don't even know where my phone is. Oh, there it is. I can't reach it. I think it's a Galaxy something. Um, where are we at? Uh, tip of the mitt flips. Well, thank you very kindly for those kind words. I do honestly appreciate that. Kia, a few months ago I found six solid gold rings and $25 casino chip chips plus a bunch of other decent things i thought it was a clean out of a rental house the cleaners even said keep it true story i've had i've had my uh, excuse me my eyes are watering here where did that go i've lost that post my feet is totally messed up um let's here let's block this adult uh, let's get rid of that i just don't want to forget about it <clears throat> The bigger you get, I guess, the more they try and scam you. My mailboxes are full of just scam emails. I even hate looking at my mailbox anymore, honestly. I don't know where that went to. I totally lost my train of thought on that one. Yeah, I'm trying to find that post that we were just here. It is. I think I found it. Yeah, one of the thrift stores that we go to, I um, haven't been there in a while, though, I walked in on some jewelry that looked like it was solid gold jewelry. And there was a bunch of rings in there. They were 10 bucks a piece. They were marked like Israel and China. And I hadn't seen gold. That was a while ago, many years ago. Not super, super long ago. But anyway, I bought one and I took it, flew from that place to a state jeweler's. Because I knew I, he passed away. I'm, I'm unfortunately a very nice guy. His son runs estate state jeweler's now. But I got a video. You can see him in there. Very nice guy he was. But anyway... So I flew over to a state jeweler's, and sure enough, good as gold, real gold, 14 karat ring. I, I sold the first ring. I paid 10 bucks for it. I had 300, and its gold was almost 2,000 an ounce then. It was 1890 or something like that. And I sold it for, I don't know, 400 bucks or something right off the bat, walked out of there with a the check. I flew back, as not flew, but I drove, I drove back and bought every piece of gold they had in their entire store. And I ended up walking out, it was like 37 solid gold rings. I swear to you, this is a true story. There's a video up here somewhere with me with a bunch of this in cash. The wife still, the wife kept like 16, 15 or 16 of them. Um, really nice stuff. They had stones in them. One of the stones was a perfect, I mean, a really nice ruby. I mean, the ruby alone was worth some money. And there's another one with a diamond in it. Anyway, the long story short is I walked at the end of the day with what we sold. And we ended up keeping a bunch. The wife kept some. Some of it we sold at a later point. But that same same day or the, the next day, we walked out of there with $12,000 in cash from estate jewelers. Uh, and that's that was at top dollar. They paid the highest out of anybody in the city. Everybody else sold to bulk to them. It's one of the dealers or one of the few places around here that buys gold filled. And he, he, he was very... He, he was very nice, very, very polite. He always was, I felt like he was being truthful with me. And, you know, it's very rough. I I'm, I'm usually can see through BS like 99% of the time. And, and in that case, he, he was very sincere. He was very, his family were, it was family business. And again, I'm, I'm a big person on family. And I'm not saying it's bad not to have a family or anything else like that. Don't get me wrong. But I, I've had small kids. I understand the, the feeling. And I tr even if it was just me and my wife, that's my family. And that would be my family business too. So anyway. I know I'm rambling, but there are those types of purchases that you can find like that. I've had many big time high dollar purchases, but that was the gold one was one of my favorite ones. 
Um, in one other case, when we were living in Mineola, Florida, there was a, the post office was in a plaza right off of Highway 27. Um, it might even still be there. There used to be a little tiny, quaint little shop that had like little booths. There, it was like a cheaper one, a lot of little like country style stuff. Very nice lady who ran it and stuff. But somebody in there brought in some gold scrap and stuff, and I ended up didn't think a whole bunch of it when I first bought it. It was really cheap, and there was bags of scrap and stuff. They were selling it at like a hundredth of the value, and one of the pieces was a chunk, uh, the biggest chunk. Just it was the sprue. Of so they made they made their own jewelry, I guess is the point. But it was a sprue this big that weighed a couple ounces and was solid fourteen karat gold. It was dark because they had they had used the the torch. But anyway, it, it was a it was probably the biggest chunk of solid gold fourteen only I know, but solid fourteen karat that I've ever had at one time, one solid piece anyway. I've had some bracelets that weighed almost an ounce or so, but. Anyway, I love gold. I have probably two ounces sitting in a safety, a safety deposit box that we will take to a state jeweler's one of these days. But um, Very good to hear that, though, Kia. Those things do happen. Uh, McShay. Well, thank you very kindly. All of the ad recommendations come back. Glitch. I, I Now, somebody else reached out to me on that the other day. Mine have not come back. When we first did them in two categories, they did come back. It depends on the category that you're doing them in. Once they've locked it and done with the updates on the specific items, we find that they don't come back. I originally had, I don't know, nine or 10,000 recommended item specifics, and I'm down to 5,200 right this minute. And, and before the end of the weekend, I'll probably be at the 4,500 uh, mark. And I'm still ending and selling similar. They're not going back up. I can't say it's not happening to everything, but I, to me, it has not happened in the categories that I personally sell in. That's all I can tell you. I know there's been reports. I know people have reached out to me and said the exact same thing that you're saying as well, which, again, it, I, I don't doubt for a minute that it's that it's happening. I know in some cases in the past when you had like a multi-item listing, let's say I've got 10 of something and I listed in one single listing with a quantity of 10, that let's say I sold five of them, I only have five available. In some cases, some folks, when they did end and sell similar, it showed 10 again at the end of the day. Now, I've tested and looked for that one, and it's not happening on our listings at all. I've done it, I've looked probably four or five times in the last year and a half since it was first reported with the new glitches going on. And I have not seen that. I've also had reports, and I've confirmed from several people now that this has happened, that it wouldn't eBay would not allow them to run a sales and markdown and say a coupon or a promoted listing and a coupon at the same time. Uh, two of the people and one person brought it to my attention. I don't want to call it names because I didn't ask her for the permission, but one person started it and then somebody else has now said the same thing. I don't know if it's specifically with promoted or some good. It sounds like a glitch because I went in immediately when she she messaged me because she she was she went back and forth with eBay. She you know even cut and pasted some of the conversation with it and, and somebody I've talked to for a very long time, very nice person, and so I went and tried it just to see what happened on mine because I'm like if that's the case that's that's people got to know about that because that would be a dangerous thing. You, why would you stop somebody somebody from running a couple of things at the same time? What does it matter to eBay? That would be like taking out control. Or like, um, I just got an article on this. In like, uh, if you sell a sports card or something, some people are having a video advertisement in with your photos that eBay put in there without your permission. Well, I guess they have permission to do whatever they want, but without telling you they're going to do it. So your customer is looking at your items and your photos. They'll look at the first two, and then all of a sudden the third one's going to be a video advertising for eBay's vault, and then the rest of your photos will be after that video. I, I think that's encroaching on our personal space, personally, but uh, apparently we have no say because of the user agreement. But Ina brought that up, and that apparently Ina has looked at it from what I saw, too. That seems like a legit thing that eBay's not doing. I don't like it. I don't plan on using the vault ever. I don't even like the authentication aspects of it. I have no problem with getting authenticated, but I don't like eBay doing it. I'd rather just send it into PSA. If they require it to be authenticated, I'm fine with that. I don't mind sending something in. But I don't trust that eBay is going to handle it properly. Just today, somebody who sent something to somebody two months ago, this is a patron, I'm not going to call it any names, as I said, I don't like to do that, but two months ago, it was authenticated through eBay. And, you know, they sent it to eBay, the seller, eBay authenticated and then sent it off to the buyer. Two months later, the buyer sent it in to have it authenticated officially and slabbed. And it turned out that it was fake. 
There were, the it, it was I don't remember the whole story, but it wasn't legit. It was no good. It wasn't going to be worth it. So eBay told that person they needed to contact the seller and let the seller deal with it. eBay is supposed to honor that. That's like the fifth time someone's told me that exact same thing. I looked after this person messaged me today. So I don't trust the authenticators there at eBay. I don't. I don't, I don't, I've heard too many issues, even that them telling him it's real and it's not, or it's not and it was. I've heard that already because it, it's, it's discretionary based on the person who's looking at it. I know PSA and all that stuff, but I do trust for the most part the PSAs on the, on the stuff. And at least it's recognizable as, as, as being as close as possible. So I, that's the one I personally use. But anyway, let's pop on down here. I know we're getting down to the end now, though. Uh, I say, be glad you have this worksheet. Yeah. We don't like listening to used car salesmen or clicky YouTubers. We like knowledge based straight to the point. Yeah, I mean, I'm not always straight to the point, but I try to be. Um, where are we at? Big John, good evening to you as well. Steve Elmore, how you doing, Steve? Family is doing well. Uh, Matt Jake, 20 years ago, eBay was so fun and made money. eBay is still fun, but I don't pay attention to, to the eBay entity itself. I just pay attention to my business aspect of it. I try to pay as little attention to eBay these days because my life has been so much better since I said I'm done with trying to deal with eBay and go back and forth. If there's a glitch, I usually don't even call them. I wait a couple days and see what happens. Unless the glitch is, I can't list, which I haven't had in a long time. It, it's just not worth your time, in my personal opinion. They're not friendly. Most of the time, including the time with the, the person I was talking about, they couldn't do uh, promoted and a coupon at the same time. eBay basically told them that, that it's a change, that that's the way it is. They've got three different answers from three different people. When I've reported issues to the people there, they've acted like it was my fault, like I did something wrong reporting the issue. They, they treat us like, pardon me, crap, most of the time when I've talked to some people about certain issues. Or they'll just hang up on you. I've been hung up. Or they'll just stop conversing with you when they give you a bad answer. It's just that their customer service sometimes is awful. Usually on the phone service for Anchor Store support, I've had good good responses. But I get, I don't deal with Facebook or eBay for business on Facebook at all anymore because I just don't like it. I don't like that I had to sign in other places and they don't respond sometimes. Or, you know, it, it's just I, I just gave up on them. Uh, it's so much easier just pe not paying any attention to eBay itself. eBay is just a percentage of my business, so I, it's not everything I do. Um, where are we at? Trevor something. Is there, is there some trick to shipping big flat signage, or do you just have to kind of eat massive costs? I don't eat any costs. I, I uh, charge actual shipping for everything that I ship, so I would never eat costs on anything. So unless you're including it free, you, you're going to, you know, I don't know why you'd want to do that in something big, especially if the price changes. I've got a business policy for all shipping. So any listing I have, I can instantly change like everything in that same shipping policy in a second, you know, and everything's set up and everything uh, the buyer pays for shipping. So I never worry about that. We've sent six foot signs. I created them up with uh, two by fours. Um, I use two by fours and one by sixes. And, um... I had a, a truck pick them up, or we drove them to, to uh, the main airport terminal and one of the trucking company terminals. If you're uh, smart and you're sending like a big sign or something like that, go talk to one of the trucking companies and see if there's a backhaul uh, spot you can get, and maybe you can get it shipped really cheap because they're bringing something back and maybe they can cram it on a truck. I used to use r &L, I think was the name of the trucking company that we used to occasionally call, and he always worked out a deal on like backhauls if he could. And I could pay you know, a quarter sometimes of what it would cost me to ship it normally because they wouldn't have had business if they hadn't done that with me. So wheel and dealing is how to do this. Harlan uh, Braley, how are you doing? Maine. I've been up to Maine once. We, f we uh, flew into Portland once, so just FYI. Uh, it was a puddle jumper, basically, a prop prop plane. Kaylin flipping for change. When did I live in Claremont? Um, quite. We lived in the Florida in f for like 10 years in the Claremont, Mineola area. Um, there used to be a couple real good uh, antique malls out that way, too, on Highway 27 in that same area. 
Uh, I lived there from 2000 to... Uh, yeah, I was there before that. I'm in law, uh, Virginia Beach. My sister-in-law lives in... Or lived in Virginia Beach for 8, 10 years. Yeah, it's not sleep anymore. When we were moving out, they were... Um, they had just put in some major sized um apartments no they were they, those apartments were still they were there already and open but they were right on the lake and we used to ride the bicycles down down from uh, where we lived off 27 in Mineola down um to the lake and then we'd take the 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 bike trail to downtown Claremont there used to be a, a couple of, there was a thrift store in downtown on one side of the street and then there was an antique store at the corner and then one more across the street so we'd ride our bikes the the five or so miles from her house to there, and we'd usually get lunch, me and the wife, and then we'd go back. And even when my oldest was just born, he would sit on the back of the bike, and we'd we'd do the pedal down there too, because I loved I, I loved bike riding. You know, I'd go from if you know the area, um, Kaylin. We used to ride the bikes from the Claremont uh, side of the bike trail all the way to Winter Garden. I think that ended up being like. 31 miles round trip and we'd do that and we'd it'd take us about i don't know five hours but we were slow we just pedaled around we'd eat lunch at uh what was it um choctaw charlie's or something no that wasn't the name of it there was a, a barbecue place in winter garden we used to go to i know i'm rambling let me move on um jody hakala I went and mailed a backpack. USPS retail guy said it's over one pound, just barely. They had to charge me two pounds when I went on their website. Eight. The UPS's web or the United States Postal Service's website prices are going to be the same prices as you would have in the store itself. Honestly, I don't see any discount or difference on them there. Now, if you got it off of eBay, it would be cheaper, or, or even Pirate Ship, or any of the other ones. But their online prices, as far as I know, are the same prices that are in the store. I could be wrong, but that's that's what I remember. And if it was just over two pounds, I would have tried to lower the weight of the box by those two ounces or whatever it is to get it below that two pound mark. Just me, or that one pound mark. Like 15.9 ounces is what I try to do if I'm possible. Um, tip of the mitt flips. They had to do an extra prime day. Things look bleak. Yeah, that's what I said. He's projecting, you know, tighten up and stuff. Uh, Bezos. And, and I, I'm again, I'm not a fan of Bezos. Don't get me wrong. Um, but he's the guy who know who's got all the data. It's, it's all about the data. I, I don't. You can say whatever you want about the guy, but he's got the data. He's got what 15 years of sales history, the biggest sales history in the globe, probably, or at least in the Western world side of the globe. He can tell us how much toilet, whatever you name it. He can probably tell you how much of it sells overall. You get in some things with with them, you're you're good as gold. You know what I mean? Again, I'm not not trying to promote it or nothing, but. Uh, let me see where we at. Uh, history repeats itself. Yes, it does. Uh, where are we at? Were you full time in two thousand eight during the last recession? If so, how did you get through it? Um, let's see here. Let me give you a. Yes, I was full. Was I full time? Yes, we were full time and we still did just I, I didn't even feel the recession, to be honest with you. When everything crashed around us like that, again, the market we sell in has no bearing on on all that other stuff. We've sold antiques and collectibles for a long time. We didn't go like like we are these days. We'd run auctions back in those days, but I didn't we weren't hurting at all back then at all. I can't. It's a steady increase since we started selling reselling in general. It's taken us a long time, don't get me wrong, but we've been reselling full time over 15 years now, basically. So you figured that out yourself. I mean, that's that's in 2008, 2007. Um, I don't, I haven't had a downturn on that. I have had downturns when I've worked for somebody else during bad times, um, when they didn't pay enough, or you know, there's no raises, or you know, they're trying to smack you on bonuses, and that's a third of your pay. That's a different story. The economy crashes. You're working for somebody. It might be impossible to hit all your bonus structure, and in some some businesses, a third of your pay. You get your base salary, and you can get a you know a third more of that based on you know meeting your numbers, your controllables, labor, your um, cogs, and then your um, discretionary or you know like utilities and stuff. So anyway, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? 
Lori Disney, welcome. Haven't seen you in here in a little while. I remember the name though. Having worked, I met met Walt Disney's daughter once before, and I met um, Roy E. Disney Jr. once before when I worked there. And I, Michael Eisner almost tripped me when he was running that. I was working there when he was there. Yeah, I did 10 years at Disney. Uh, recently found a signed book and two signed albums. I love signed stuff. I sign, I find autographed items all the time. At thrift stores, we found tons. In fact, I we went to one randomly not too long, a couple months back, and I got a stack of autographed books, hundreds of dollars worth of autographed first edition books, all hand signed, too. Um Wanda Greer. Well, thank you. That's a true story. We we actually snuck on there. In fact, uh, uh, there was an accident on I-4, and our pastor was stuck in traffic, heading back to pick his car. He was in traffic for like an hour and a half. Somebody, one of his family members, was going the opposite direction in the direction we were, were, were at, and they swapped cars, and they waited in his car and, and gave him their car, and he showed up in some stranger's car, and he said they swapped cars. He happened to, you know, was lucky enough to get him on, you know, on the phone or something. I don't remember the whole story, but at the end of the day, he showed up. He showed up in somebody else's car, which is really kind of funny. It rained on our wedding, too, so we were all set to have it outside. On Little Lake Bryan, and it's now Animal Kingdom. It used to be called Little Lake Bryan. There was Discovery Island out there, too, and... Um, we were set to be outside on this nice stage in front of, you know, trees and all this stuff, and it rained, and we had to have it in this really awful little, um, like, employee club. It was just awful, it, 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 but it was it was fine. It was us. The wife and I, you know, laugh about it still because that's the kind of stuff. We have bad luck. That's the kind of stuff that's always happened to us, you know. So, anyway, it's kind of funny now that I think about it, but anyway. Um, I'm not mad that it ruined the wedding to that extent because it wasn't about – we love each other, so it wasn't about, you know, having some fancy wedding. It wasn't anything fancy. It was just, a, you know, uh, not a shotgun wedding or anything else like that, but it was just, you know, we wanted to get married, and we invited some friends and stuff, and that was about it. That's, we didn't care about all the fanfare. I'm not a fancy person. We didn't have the money for it anyway, but neither of us cared, and we're just as happy as can be not doing it anyway, so. Um... Oh, where are we at? Where are we at? The Newsom is that 61, it looks like. eBay is just like any job. The harder you work, the more you will succeed. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. In the real world, you can work really hard and your boss might not like you and you may never go anywhere. You know, unfortunately, I've seen those stories too. Um, crawfish boil, yes, 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 in January. We will do that. I'm a native O-Town. My first job was at Disney back when you could sneak in. Yeah, I remember those days, too. And, yes, that area was about half developed when I moved. I lived close to the Citrus Tower as well. At the end of our street was an orange grove, a massive orange grove. So, And we lived on a cul-de-sac right off of 27, right near the post office, in all honesty. But um, we could throw a rock and hit an orange, orange grove, honestly. Um, I liked living out there, don't get me wrong, but it got old when everything got congested and sometimes going up Highway 50 down. The, we used to go the back way through like, um, what's that area back there? We'd go down Highway 50 and then turn right down the back roads and we'd come in the back side of Walt Disney World. Um, I, for the life of me, can't remember the road. We turned before Winter Garden, down off 50 to the right, heading towards Winter Garden from Claremont. Uh, what's the name of that road? I want to say it's maybe a highway numbered road or something. It took us about 30 minutes from Claremont to get to Disney. Um, we, again, we were right off 27, so we'd have to drive 27 to 50. Uh, that was, I think, the easiest way. When we lived on the other side, I lived in Kissimmee at one point, we'd drive, obviously, 192 and have to deal with major tourist traffic. We lived down by Hiawassee, too, off of 50 once before, too. We had um, an apartment that was, like, in the trees. It was really nice. It was a really nice apartment, but we paid for it. Um, let's just get one more. I know I'm way later than usual, but we're just yapping today. Um, probably with most courses that many of the resources listed in the courses have already been picked clean or are outdated. Yeah, because uh, uh, Dawson 6211, the the, the basic point is they'll do it once and they, they'll never do it again. They'll, that's the course. There it is. You're done. And, and a lot of people do that. It's not just a reseller or certain markets. 
most professors in college will set up their course for their class, all the reading material and stuff, and they won't even change it for years. Because why? Why would they? It's just the same thing. They might update the book they use and have to change a few pages or something, but usually the the book manufacturers give them like notes on it and stuff. I've had, you know, professor editions of the books with all the answers and that stuff in it before. So anyway. Uh, let's see here. And Jimmy lived right near the Citrus Tower too. So there's three of us who lived right in the same area and our paths did not pass. Stephanie Lynn. Yeah, the, the library is a great source. I've used it countless times. Even for CDs, we'd, you know, rip tracks. I know technically you're not supposed to, but we've rip, ripped, like, obscure um, tracks. Why I'm Here by Oleander. I looked for it forever, and you couldn't get the CD. Uh, if you know, anybody should anybody who's a 90s person knows Oleander and Why I'm Here. Um, and I ended up having to get it from the library. I just took in my laptop at that time and had my burner in there, a CD drive, and boom, off I went. I had the, had the song at home then after that. Uh, I l used LimeWire back in the day, if you know what that is. Um... Hey, Kathy, how you doing? Strictly Anything Kathy Reese, how are you doing? Hopefully things are going well on your end, Kathy. Always good to see you in-house for sure. <clears throat> Hopefully you still got things going with Duncan and you still got your interests going and you got your sideline going as well, Kathy. It's always been nice to talk to you, of course. Auction one thing. Good, another good resource is just ask nicely someone who has been doing it a long time. We have open door for folks asking questions about the business. Yeah, I could say in some aspects, yes, but man, I, I've put myself out there a few times and now people just, uh, they take advantage of it. And I hate to say that, but people are always trying to take advantage of if I'm if I help them once, then it's it's I gotta help them every time, or I get really the people they get nasty about it. And I, I'm hesitant to help anybody sometimes unless they're people I know these days, only because that stuff happens. Uh, I used to help you know constantly. I used to respond to all the comments and posts on here even too, but I don't no way I have the time. And after you know having some nasty people, it's just not worth the aggravation anymore. I don't. I wish I had more time. People email me through eBay all, every day of the week, and I get, get that's that's more aggravating because they think they're going to get me, and most of the time it's it's not me, you know. They're thinking I'm the only one that does this, and we've got a house full of people, you know, doing eBay, and ninety percent, ninety five percent of the time I'm not answering the emails at all. I don't even see the eBay emails most of the time unless it's something that only I would possibly know or something because I do a lot of other stuff, you know. I price and all that stuff, and that's far more important to price and you know, sort and get stuff ready than it is anything else. And Because I know the stuff better than most people, other than the wife. The wife's about as good in Victorian trade cards as I am, I would say. Maybe better in naming people. She always remembers the faces and stuff, which I'm terrible on. Names and faces, I'm just, uh But that's just me, I guess. I better let it go. I'm sitting here yapping, and I'm not paying attention to time or anything else like that. I could probably talk all night and bore everybody to death. Uh, Henry S. Goodwill finds a new site has depleted nearly everything good at their source. That's been years ago. We haven't. Our store has had their own website that they auction off the better stuff for a couple, three, four, five years around here. Um, there might even be. I think all the stuff comes from the main one here, and they were sending it to their local. They had some third party that ran the site for them. I think, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been the Goodwills around here haven't had stuff for years in, in this area. Um, we've been back here for 15, 16 years or something like that, I think. Something like that in, in Ohio, or I have been, I should say. And Goodwill's been pretty bad ever since I've been here for 15 years, probably. It's my le It's always been my least favorite place to go. The last good thing, really good thing I got there was, um, that wasn't a Goodwill. The last good thing I got was some Marks tanks, the German 351s from the, from the uh, was it Battle of the Bulge place that I think? 4071 maybe i don't know what it what it is but the 351 tank and the the german gray tanks and stuff I, that's the last good one i got that was a couple hundred bucks and that was like a fluke they thought they were just plastic junk it's the only reason they didn't do anything with them but unfortunately ours have been bad and you know i thought well let me buy it off their site you know i'll get a chance to see it and stuff they go for more on their their auctions on their own auctions because it's for charity so most of the stuff that i saw was going for far more than i could even sell for on ebay half the time the records it was it was insane so i stopped i never even look on their site anymore honestly you'll do far better on high bid 
or the way it looks too. People are just giving stuff away and whatnot. If again, I haven't done. I've done four whatnots, and I I would have made more money doing eBay every single time and just selling a few items, is what I feel. I mean, again, yeah, maybe it's great for some folks, but I I'm I'm not interested in giving it away and. But the amount of time I have to spend on it, I might as well just list it on eBay and got higher prices for it. That's all I look at it. You know, I don't know, just me. But you can buy stuff on whatnot, the price I see stuff selling for, unless you're pushing it as it's from this famous person or something. Chumley's on there talking about Pawn Stars. He's, he sells Pokemon cards on there. He sells them personally live himself is what it looked like to me. Um, you know, more power to him, but you know, he's selling him because of who he is and he's got the connections probably with the card companies to market them. So, cause he's got his own candy store and stuff. So it's all probably some big tie in more power to him again. No disrespect to that. Cause you know, he, he seems like he's, you know, fun loving type of person. Yeah, I'm sure he's probably got a lot of money, but you know, he's doing something. He came up with his own little thing. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. You know, we're talking about Pawn Star, so that's that's a perfect example of, you know. But again, I'm not willing to push being a, a YouTuber to sell to, to you guys my stuff on whatnot. And that's why it didn't work for me because I wasn't trying to push that you're going to get a ton of money. I tried to tell you on the whatnots, it's decent, it's going to go for this or that probably, and I've tried to be truthful with it. A lot of people think they're going to make a ton of money on everything on there, and you know, I don't know. It's just not just not my thing, I guess. Let's just take a, a one or two more here because we're running down to the end. Glenn Ishi, uh, Glenn Ishi. I'm sorry if I pronounce again. My my pronunciations are probably terrible. Aloha, back at you. Vintage Vanya. Good evening. Good evening. My Prince Albert tobacco can just got pulled off eBay yesterday after being on months. I would probably say that. Maybe a accident. I might actually contact eBay and see where, why they pulled something like that down. If it had anything in it like tobacco, that would be a perfect reason why they pulled it down. But unless Prince Albert has some negative connotation or somebody, I don't know, that's a tough one. Unless the graphics on it, but I, I've seen a dozens and dozens of Prince Albert cans. I can't imagine anyone being bad. Trippy Hippie Flipper. I bought a literal suitcase full of buttons on Facebook Marketplace a couple of months ago. I went to you to look for identification docs, which came up. I've sold 83 things on eBay as of today. What kind of buttons? I would like to wonder what those are. I love buttons. We've got, I don't know, half a million buttons in inventory, probably. That's probably a legit number. I only have 6,500 button listings, maybe, between all the categories. Um, anyway, I've got hundreds of them all ready to go. I just, I'm, things are just so crazy these days. Lost Leaders Matt Shake. Thanks so much for your, well, thank you very kindly. Uh, Pilot makes a ton of money, former truck driver. When did you work there? Uh, I worked in the Jackson, Mississippi Pilot. It was 24 hours, of course. I worked tw uh, 10 at night till 10 in the morning. It was an awful place to work. We were robbed so many times. Um, I've got the CCD, uh, um, the security camera a DVD from some of the fights that not, I shouldn't say fight fights, but some of the altercations I had with some robberies, um, including us nabbing some in the front and stuff. I had, We had police officers that worked there. Jackson can be a tough town if you haven't, haven't aren't aware of that. Um... I went and met Hals Haslam, I think his name was, the owner of the company. We went to um, Tennessee, I think is where it was back then. His brother, I think it was his brother separated, and they run or ran Flying J's, if I'm not mistaken. So the family owned the two, one of, two of the two biggest ones. And then the trucking lines that ran with them, they had J.B. Hunt, which was one of the biggest ones in the country. Um, I, I, the, the computer system there was like one of those ones that I was darn determined to learn because the, the, the computer system that runs the trucking side is very complicated, or it was for most people. I got it down, thank goodness, and knew all the ins and outs and back ways so we could, we figured out how to get checks through that we knew were good and we'd call and verify for payroll. You know, some of them drivers might walk off with $3,400 in a week, you know, truthfully. I've seen checks like that for a week. At least they tell me it's for a week. Um, Ross Hammond. Um, I'm not in the Zodiac, but I'm a Leo, if that helps. Um, I was, uh, Jimmy Flippin, I was other direction, Grand Highway and Citrus 
Tower Boulevard near Jack's Lake just before I moved. They were developing off North Ridge Boulevard. Yeah, I know exactly where you're talking about. I know that area very well, actually. Daniel Lancaster, well, thank you very kindly. Let me make sure that that's deleted off there, too. I don't know if anybody else can see that. Hide user from channel. We always get those adult ones, and I don't get why. At least lately. I have a Thomas Kincaid wrap canvas of Peter Pan with a certificate of authenticity. It's 10 by 8 by 1.5. Very gorgeous. It must be one of those stretch canvas that goes around the sides. Sorry, I'm getting prices all over the place, though. Thomas, I'm not a fan of Thomas Kincaid at all, to be honest with you. I, I think it's... I'm not going to criticize him because I know there's some, I'm sure a lot of people really like it, but I'm not a fan of Thomas Kincaid's work at all. Not at all. I just don't like the style at all. It just reminds me of bad hotel paintings from back in the day. And again, I'm not trying to be, I'm not the best artist myself, but I just don't like the style. It's just, just not my thing. Again, great if you love it. Um, I like Christensen's, like the fantasy artwork and stuff, Mill Pond Press stuff and Greenwich Workshop and stuff. I like those fantasy stuff. Christensen, my wife's got the figurines and puzzles and all that kind of stuff. James Christensen, very well-known fantasy. That's my type of artwork. I like Tim Burton-esque style artwork and stuff like that. I like the outsider artwork and stuff. Um... Uh, if it flips, it ships one one. I'm working on a deal with rolls of really good packing paper from a distributor, and I'm getting authorization to be able to sell online. Yeah, I don't do any packing paper at all, honestly. I, I get the bubble wrap and end cuts. I can get a thousand feet for about twenty twenty five bucks. Um, wide, eighteen inches or better bubble wrap. I bubble wrap it, or I use free packing material these days. Um, I get the eBay tissue paper, but I'd never buy packing material at all these days at all. You know, other than the, the end cuts and the bubble wrap. And end cuts, I've talked about this before, but I guess nobody's really dug into them too much. I know there's some people that buy from the same place I do now because I've referred them. But an end cut, and we'll end it off on here because I know I'm way past what I usually talk. An end cut is, let's say um, a box manufacturer needs to cut um, specific size rolls of bubble wrap for this client, a couple more sizes for this guy, or they're going to turn some into padded um, poly bags because they make them they, they pad them they glue the standard bubble wrap on the a poly bag before onto just sheets of the poly material and then it's cut by the machines as it goes through the pro i've seen it i've been in there when they did it and um at the end of the day usually they, they, these bubble rolls come in these bubble wrap rolls come in these like 10 foot rolls or eight foot depends on the size of the machine and at the end of the day there's a section of a thousand foot roll of bubble wrap that they don't that doesn't fit any order. They don't keep these around. They just blow them out as end cuts, and they're usually like a tenth of the price of normal bubble wrap. So that's what we always get. We you, sometimes I've had so much it filled up my van when we had the van, and it, it was these huge rolls. I mean, they were you know five feet across. It was these huge huge rolls of bubble wrap for almost nothing. And I've just lived off those forever. That's that's what I use for it. But we're gonna let it go at that. I do appreciate everybody coming on. We've got 236 people in house right now. If you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up before the end of the show. I'm going to let it go, and I do appreciate it. Well, one more thing. The call-outs, if I didn't say it in the beginning of the show, will be uh, updated uh, tomorrow. Uh, there's a new video up on YouTube membership, and there's also a new video up on Patreon. It's the first part of another three-part series on trade cards because i got a ton of people, including some very nice personal emails about those first three videos. So, there's a ton of labels, there's signage, there's a lot of one-offs you'll never see before, see anywhere else. A lot of rare stuff. There's probably $15,000 worth of sale price items you're going to see of what I'll get out of these items in the, in the three-part video coming up. That Again, first part's today. I will probably, like last week, you had an, there was three videos up on Patreon last week and three up on on membership it'll probably be about that it was an hour and a half worth of videos that I, i've already got ready for this one so there's still another hour i may still get it up this weekend it just depends if i have somebody who can finish the final editing if not part two will be up by sunday evening and then monday or tuesday part three will be up and then we're going into a different topic so just fyi i don't want to miss out because i know I, I forgot to holler that one out but i appreciate it i hope everybody has a good day one last time, slam that thumbs up. Show some love for the channel if you're enjoying the conversation.